fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Joe Neal, young owner-publisher of the Cane Creek Weekly Nugget, had a financial windfall when representatives of the Rocky Mountain Refining Company came into town and started buying advertising space in his newspaper. Now, Mr. Neal, what do you think of our proposed ad for this week? I only wish I had the ready cash to buy a few shares of your stock, Senator Dodd. Yes, those that are buying now, to use one of the Senator's expressions, are getting in on the ground floor, and they'll all realize large returns on their investments. Quite true, Mr. Sloan. But more important than personal profits, the Rocky Mountain Refining Company is interested in seeing the West grow so it can take its rightful place in this great expanding nation of ours. I know most of the people here feel the same way, Senator. And a gold stamping mill on Cane Creek will certainly put our little community on the map. Exactly, Mr. Neal. With the construction of our mill, instead of panning gold for a meager existence, crude ore can be refined right on the spot. And that will eliminate all high shipping charges that have been eating up the profits. Has a site for the mill been selected yet? If so, I'd like to run a story on it. As chief engineer, it's up to Mr. Sloan. Uh, Senator, remember, we have to be very careful about giving out that information as yet. You're right, Mr. Sloan. There are always unscrupulous persons who might try to use that information for their own personal gain. You see, Mr. Neal, if it were known what property we were interested in, the owner could very easily raise the price on us. I understand. But you'll be the first to get the story when the news can be safely released. I hate to take your money for the ad when you're doing so much for our town. Nonsense, my boy. Nonsense. I know it takes money to run a newspaper. Thank you. Certainly. Certainly. Well, good day, Mr. Neal. Goodbye, sir. Mr. Sloan. Good day. Ah, oh, Mr. Neal. How are you today? Fine. Thank you, Senator Dodd. Good, good. Glad to hear it. Good day. Well, Martha, the Rocky Mountain Refining Company took another ad. Shorty. Yes. Will you set this up? A full page again. Yes, Mr. Neal. Joe, I don't like those men. I just feel they can't be trusted. Martha, we've been through this before. I wish we'd never heard of them or their company. Well, their money's been mighty good. So let us catch up on most of our back debts. I know, but I'd feel awfully guilty if anything went wrong. You know, they've sold a lot of stock on the strength of their advertising in our newspaper. If you have anything against them, Martha, just say so. It's nothing I can put my finger on. Maybe it's just a woman's intuition. But I have the feeling I've read about them or heard about them someplace. In other words, you think they're crooks. They're going to swindle our friends by selling them worthless stock. All right, Joe Neal, make fun of me. But I'm going to do some checking. All right, Martha, we'll check on them together, who they are and where they're from. Will that make you feel better? I'm sorry, Joe. I didn't mean to get mad. Oh, that's all right. After all, a reputable newspaper does have a responsibility to the community it serves. Tonto, faithful companion of the Lone Ranger, had discovered something that would be of great interest to his masked friend. Whenever you ride in like that, Tonto, I know you have something to tell me. Now, when me and store me see newspaper. Oh, that's not the Blakely Gazette. No, Kimasabi. It's paper from Cane Creek. You read ad on back page. The names are different, but the wording of the ad is the same. This time, they're selling stock to build a gold stamping mill. Them steal from many people. Yes, Tonto. And by their dishonesty, they make it doubly hard for honest businessmen to raise cash for legitimate enterprises. Maybe we get to Cane Creek before they're able to swindle people there. We'll try. Now, this paper's dated two weeks ago. I hope we're not too late. Find anything yet? No. I'm sure I read about them someplace. I thought it would be in one of these exchange papers from out of town. Well, this is the last of them. Do you think I could be wrong about Senator Dodd and what he's trying to do? Your woman's intuition letting you down? Mr. Neal. Yes, Shorty? I got the front page locked in. Be right there. Joe Neal, you better go back to getting tomorrow's edition out. And you've still got all these papers to go through. Happy hunting. All right, Shorty, let them roll. Joe, come here. What is it? I think I found it. Listen, attention investors, large profits for your cash investment. Your money can guarantee your community a place of importance in the West. Why, that's the very same ad, word for word, that we're running this week. 
And it goes on to say that the three men who placed that ad sold worthless stock in a refining company and then left town with all the money. Why, those dirty, swindling crooks. We better tell the sheriff right away. You bet. But the sheriff's not in town. He rode over to Mesa City this morning to deliver a prisoner. What are we going to do? The sheriff will be back tomorrow. I'll tell you what we're going to do, Martha. We're going to bring out a special edition. I don't understand. Don't you see? If we work tonight and reset the front page, we can still have the paper ready for morning. It'll be a real scoop. I know, but... Uh... But think what it'll mean for our circulation. As soon as the sheriff makes the arrest, we bring out the paper. But what about the money the senator and his friends have already collected? If they should decide to leave town... Well, they wouldn't get very far. Besides, they can't take the money. It's safely locked up in a bank vault. Well, if you're sure they can't get away with any of the money, I, I guess it would be all right. I'm sure it will be. Shorty, we're going to have a new front page. We're going to bring out a special edition. Hey, Gene, the newspaper people are working late tonight. Yeah, the paper comes out tomorrow. I'm sure glad I don't have to work that hard. Only fools work hard. Smart people use their heads. Go over and see if you can pick up a couple of papers and bring them up to the room. Yeah, right. Dodd and Sloan exposed the swindlers. That'll really make the people of Cane Creek sit up and take notice. certainly did a beautiful job on these stock certificates. Look like the real thing. Well, we have to give the suckers something for their money, don't we? <laughs> Watermarks and everything. Hey, Gene, open up, quick. Relax, it's my brother Tom. What's all the excitement? We gotta get out of town, Gene. Those newspaper people, they found out about us. How do you know, are you sure? I saw the headline for tomorrow's paper. If you know about us, there's only one thing to do. Clear out and clear out fast. Ah, uh, shut up. Have they started to distribute the papers as yet? I don't think so. I think they were just starting to print them. Well, that's in our favor. If the sheriff was out of town, they couldn't have told him as yet. What are you talking about, Sloan? Have you forgotten that all the money we've collected so far is locked up in a safe in the bank? Yeah, that's right. And if we leave town now, we'd have to leave without it. Saving our skin is more important than money. Well, I don't care to leave town for at least another week. Gene, are you crazy? I don't think so. Another week, we'll add several thousand more to our take. And besides, we'll have a chance to get our hands on the money we've already collected. Yeah, but when the newspaper comes out, the whole town will want to lynch us. Then we should see to it that the paper doesn't come out. It's as simple as that. Good evening. What are you doing here? Oh, we thought we'd like to look at our ad in tomorrow's paper. You'll see it in the morning when the rest of the town does. We'd like to see it now. Tom? Let those papers alone. Oh, shut up. Now look, don't do anything foolish, Joe. Now you wait on Mrs. Neal. Let's see the paper, Tom. Yeah, what does it say? I'll save you the trouble of reading it. It tells all about you and your friend, the senator. How you sold phony stocks in Three Rivers and then skipped town with the money. Oh, I see you've learned a great deal about us, huh? You and your fake company. You never intended to build a stamping mill here. And all your big talk about developing the West. Well, you're not going to get away with it. Well, that's quite a speech, and I admire your intentions. But it doesn't fit in with my plans. All right, Tom. You cowards. I understand your feelings, Mrs. Neal, but we have our interest to protect. What are you going to do? Nothing, really, as long as you take orders from me. What do you mean by that? Well, your husband here is going to take a little trip with my brother Tom. And when we leave town, he'll be set free, unharmed. And if you don't cooperate with us, something very serious could happen to Joe. My silence for Joe's life. Crudely put, but exactly right. And you'll continue to run the newspaper under my supervision, of course. In a week or two, when we're ready to leave town, Joe will be sent back. We, we better do what Mr. Sloan says, Mrs. Neal. That's uh, very smart of you, Shorty. Well, is it agreed, Mrs. Neal? Well? Yes. Good. All right, Tom, you know where to take him. Don't leave a trail that can be followed. Don't worry. I'll be careful. Well, now we have a newspaper to get out, one that omits any uncomplimentary references about us.
Main Creek is just over the next rise. Uh, me go to town, Kima Saturn? Yes. And find out if the men mentioned in the newspaper ad are still there. And if they are, where they're staying. Me do. I'll make camp and wait here for you. Tonto learned important information in Cane Creek and rushed back to the Lone Ranger. Well, Tonto? Two men still in town, but other man not there. Do you know where he went? Me not know where he go, but me find out newspaper editor to go with him. They gone two, three days now. Well, that's strange. From what I've heard of Joe Neal, he and his wife are honest and respectable citizens. It's hard to imagine them having anything to do with crooks and swindlers. Me not understand that either. Did you talk to Mrs. Neal? Me try to, but her not want to talk. We go see Sheriff? No, Tonto, I'd like to see Mrs. Neal first. I want to know if her husband has some connection with the men we're after. She live in a little house just outside of town. We'll go there after dark. Good night, Mrs. Neal. Good night, Shirley. Oh, good night, Mrs. Neal. I'll, uh, I'll lock up the office, Mr. Sloan. Doesn't really matter who you work for, does it, Shirley? Well, I... You could do a lot worse than sticking with us. You know the old saying, everyone gets his just rewards? Well, I'll see you in the morning, huh? Yeah, yes, of course, Mr. Sloan. Good night, Shorty. <laughs> Please don't be alarmed because of the mask. What do you want? Who are you? I want to talk to you, Mrs. Neal. You know my name. Yes, and I'm sure your husband would consider me a friend. But who are you? Joe once ran an article about a man called the Lone Ranger. Do you remember that? Yes. He mentioned a bullet as a mark of identification. It's silver. Then you're the Lone Ranger. May I come inside? I guess so. Thank you. Mrs. Neal, where is your husband? He went out of town for a few days on business. Why did Tom Sloan go with him? Why are you asking me these questions? Senator Dodd and the Sloan brothers are crooks who should have been put behind bars long ago. Then you know about them. Tonto and I have been trailing them for some time. I want to know Joe's connection with Dodd and the Sloans. Joe's not a crook. I didn't say that he was, but the others are. Then you're going to expose them? Oh, but you can't. If you do, they'll kill Joe. Who will? Tom Sloan. He's holding Joe a prisoner. Perhaps if you tell me the whole story from the beginning, I can help you. No one can. I'd like to try. You've helped so many others. I want to help you and Joe. Please trust me. Well, Joe and I found out that Dodd and the two Sloans are crooks. We were going to expose them in the paper. They found out about it, destroyed all the papers we'd printed, and Tom Sloan took Joe away. When did this happen? Three days ago. They threatened to kill Joe if I said anything. If I only knew where he is, or could be sure he's still alive. Mrs. Neal, we might find Joe and at the same time bring the swindlers to justice, if you will help. I'll do anything you say. Good. Morning, Shorty. Uh, Mrs. Neal, what are you doing here so early? I've been here all night. I just finished printing up a special edition. Special edition? How does it look? Well, that's like the one we set up the other day. That's right, Shorty. Aren't you sort of looking for trouble, Mrs. Neal? Oh, Mr. Sloan sees this. He'll make sure that Mr. Neal is killed, just like he threatened. Have you ever heard of the Lone Ranger? Oh, well, yes. Well, what's he got to do with it? It was his idea. As soon as Dodd and Sloan read this paper, they'll leave town in a hurry and go to where Tom Sloan is holding Joe. Well, yes. Well, don't you see, Shorty? The Lone Ranger will follow them. Say, that's a great idea. If they stay in town after the paper comes out, they'll be lynched. That's right. Now, I'm going to see that Dodd and Sloan get their copy. And as soon as you see me leave the hotel, I want you to start giving out the rest of them. All right, Mrs. Neal. Oh, Mrs. Neal, you're up early. I have something to show you. What's the meaning of this? Joe often said he'd rather die than knuckle down to a bunch of crooks. And in a few minutes, everyone in town will know you and your friends for exactly what you are. Well, what do you mean? Shorty's out now making deliveries of this special edition. You're going to have a lot of visitors before long. 
You better hurry if you hope to get out of town alive. Trump! Trump! What's all the excitement about? Look. Where'd you get this? Mrs. Neal just gave it to me. She says I'll be all over town in a few minutes. A fool. Did you tell her what would happen to Joe? She didn't seem to care. You don't think they're here already? You think they'd knock if they were? Yeah, that's it. Who is it? It's me, Shorty. I guess you've seen the paper. Yeah, we've seen it, all right. Yeah. Oh. Mrs. Neal ordered me to pass out these papers, but I haven't started doing it yet. And no one has seen them? Oh, that's right, Mr. Sloan. You see, I, I figured they were more important to you than they were to anyone else in town. And you were quite right, Shorty. Yes, my boy, you shall be handsomely repaid. If no one has seen the papers yet, it shouldn't be hard to take care of Mrs. Neal. Smash the printing press and destroy all those papers that have been printed already. Oh, you can't do that, Mr. Sloan. Why not? You're being watched. Watched by whom? The Lone Ranger. What? He was talking to Mrs. Neal. It was his idea to run this special edition. It was? Yeah, he figured that when you left town, he'd follow you. And that you'd lead him to your brother, who was holding Mr. Neal. Oh, he did, did he? What are we going to do, Sloan? Well, as soon as Mrs. Neal tells the sheriff, he'll be after us. We're half the town at our heels. But if we leave town, the Lone Ranger will be after us. Yes, but he won't try to stop us. As long as he knows we're going to lead him to Joe, and since we know he's following us, we can lose him along the way. But suppose we can't. If we can't, we'll arrange a little surprise. It'll take care of him for good. You, you won't forget me. I can't stay in town just as soon as Mrs. Neal finds out I haven't delivered the papers. I'll take care of you, Shorty. Now, you'll leave the papers here. The wafers are on the barn back at the hotel. A few minutes. Yes, sir, Mr. Sloan. Why did you do that? If the Lone Ranger saw Shorty with us, why, he might suspect that we know more than we should. Now, oh, come on, get the money. Sure, sure. Sloan and man who call himself Silent are just right away from front of hotel. Well, Tonto, they've taken our bait. Ah, me see fellow who work in newspaper office go into hotel, but him not come out. Did he pass out any of the papers before he went in? Me not see him do that. I didn't see him come out the back. Do you think maybe him double-cross Mrs. Neal? It's possible. And if he has, we'll have to be doubly careful. Mrs. Neal be safe? Yes, I told her to go directly to the sheriff's office after she left the hotel. That's a good idea. I'm sure it's safe now to start trailing Sloan and the senator. We don't want them to get too far ahead of us. Ah. They're still following us. Their horses are faster than ours. We cannot run them. And there's another way of taking care of them. Come on. This looks like a good spot, Senator. Get your rifle. But I don't let you commit murder. Would you rather be taken back to town than a necktie party? Now, come on. The quicker we get this over, the safer we'll be. Here they come. Get ready. I'll take the masked man, you take the Indian. Now, stop shaking. I'll be all right. But I never killed a man before. back down the trail and make sure they're finished off. Are you crazy, Sloan? But now the sheriff and half the town are probably after us. Uh, I guess you're right. Well, they look dead enough to me. Come on, Senator. Are you all right, Tonto? Me all right, Kim, honey. Good thing you suspect ambush. We're we'll ready for it. It's safe now. Bullets come plenty close. Yes, Tonto. It seems that Sloan and the senator will not stop at murder. Maybe them carry out threat to kill Joe Neal? If we don't hurry, they may succeed. Let me get horses. Well, I've seen you taking good care of Joe. You'll never get away with this, Sloan. But we have. We have the money to prove it. I thought you were going to leave town until the end of the week. Well, we had to change our plans. Did something go wrong? Everything. 
What happened? Despite our threats, Joe's wife printed that story about us in the newspaper. Good for Martha. I don't see what you're so happy about. That story signed your death warrant. If you kill me, you'll be wanted for murder. We've already killed the Lone Ranger and his Indian friend. They can't hang us any higher for getting rid of you, too. You've killed the Lone Ranger? A bullet stopped him as easily as it stops anyone else. Well, Joe, it's been nice knowing you. Stand away from gun. All right, Tonto, I don't think they'll try anything more. I'm sure glad to see you. And I'm sure Martha will be very glad to see you, Joe. Come on, get in here. Kane Creek certainly owes a great deal to you two. Not to mention you're saving my life. Without your wife's help and courage, Joe, we might not have been successful. I'll see that every cent those crooks have collected is returned. Sheriff, the idea of building a gold stamping mill isn't a bad one. Under the right management, it could mean a great deal to Kane Creek. He's right. There is a real need for it. That's why everybody was so anxious to invest their money to have one built. Well, we could hold a meeting of the investors and put it up to them. I'll run an article in the paper telling of the proposed plan. What happened to the masked man and his Indian friend? He's gone. Well, who is he? He never did tell me his name. Why, Sheriff, he's the greatest man in all the West. He's the Lone Ranger. Oh,